graphene oxide formula. A formula that sends water flying off surfaces, keeping water spots at bay. Go beyond wax, beyond ceramic. Graphene Nano Spray Coating from 303. The Falcon Azenus RT660 is the enthusiast's choice for ultra-high performance. Engineered for predictable handling and stability, the RT660 provides maximum traction both on and off the track. Your competitive edge has arrived with the Falcon Azenus RT660. Here at FCP Euro, we take pride in the fact that each and every one of your orders is picked, packaged, and shipped by a fellow car enthusiast. We understand that you need the right parts and need them fast to complete that next project or get your daily driver back on the road. Take John, our quality assurance specialist. He's normally found in the distribution center quality checking your orders, but he's also often found out on track in his Audi TTRS, putting parts that we sell to the test, such as upgraded track pads and suspension components. John understands how important it is for you to trust the quality of your parts, whether at the limit or just simply going to the grocery store. If you want to learn more about us, head to fcpuro.com. Welcome everybody to Grid Life Live. I'm Abram Schmucker here at Midsummer Meet with my co-host Adam Nielsen. This is uh, points uh, round six, track battle 2021 season number five. And uh, we're in the kind of hot and heavy portion of the season this year. Yeah. Lots of events, super close together. Absolutely. Uh, um, you just came back from PPIR. I was away for that event. Uh, and here we are at Mid-Ohio two weeks later. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm still kind of hung over from the PPIR event. So very excited to be here. Uh, lots of cars on track. We've got uh, Ferris Khartoumi on screen here uh, in kind of uh, winning trim, really. He's, he's decided that he wants to run both the unlimited class and the track modified class this year. Uh, two ticket entries. All he does is swap tires yeah. uh, between sessions, yep. and he goes out and sets records in both. It's kind of interesting, track mod and unlimited being so close to each other, with the major difference being the tire limitation, and also a few small arrow rules that Ferris currently isn't taking advantage of in unlimited trim anyway. So, yeah, that car, despite it looking like the most wild thing in the world, still can double duty in classes. Yeah, it's uh, this car is kind of remarkable because uh, in the unlimited class, you really can think about it in you know in, in terms of rule set. It's nearly unlimited. It's and so like safety rules. And <laughs> there's some safety component stuff That's about and, it. and a few other things. And so like um, this car, even though it's very wild, is not incredibly complicated. Um, it just happens to have. Uh, all the horsepower yeah. and uh, yeah. and all the arrow, so it goes pretty quick. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ferris a hell of a wheel man, too. What, uh, what I like uh, w w talking with Ferris, what I did learn is many of our drivers use data to get faster throughout the weekend. And, uh, well, uh, despite his, his uh, machinery, <laughs> Ferris doesn't use data. He doesn't have any data system in the car. Uh, he just drives by feel. Yeah. And he, he's really good at it. I kind of really like that. <laughs> I think it's really cool. Um, you know, certainly I, I believe that he probably could find a lot of time um, if he started using that stuff. But, I mean, he's clearly doing all right for himself. And, and you know, there's always room to grow in, in future seasons. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, here we are in Time Attack A. The initial run group is kind of built uh, by me, actually, as a kind of a best guess for – where cars will probably be yeah. and uh, we're hoping to minimize just the number of passes that have to be executed during ru run group number one as this heat finishes and people get sorted by time instead of best guess uh, cars will have much cleaner track and have the opportunity to put down their best lap at the start of heat two but uh, I can't recall if Ferris has driven here before or not, but I don't expect it will take him long to learn I because he is a fast learner here. On I'm pretty Ultra. certain this is his first time here. Well, Lisa actually, no, he, he was here last year, but had a whole lot of mechanical trouble. Oh, OK. Um, and I don't know if he put down any laps last year. Well, uh, currently the track mod record held by Jeremy Swenson. So, um, I mean, that doesn't mean necessarily that he didn't get any laps, but um, possibly not any too fast. Uh, another car here on track is, is someone we're used to seeing here at Mid-Ohio. It's Logan Carswell in the four-rotor kind of wide-body RX-7. JGTC I, I am uh, 
um, um, a testifier for how loud <laughs> that car is. Yeah. Uh, we were behind it at startup today, and uh, my ears are still ringing. Yeah, it's a bad place to be. It's no, it's a it's glorious car near on it. track. It's a glorious sounding car on track, but it's certainly very loud. Uh, who else on track here? I know that uh, Brandon Randbeck in his uh, E36 M3 is yep. here. Uh, Jackie Ding's here in the Tesla Model 3. Um, who else? Uh, we've got, uh, this is Adam Ulrich on screen here, it looks like. Um, Logan Carswell there. What a wild, wild piece of machinery. Yeah, it's a uh, custom four-rotor uh, engine with a sequential trans. It's it's crazy loud. It's crazy. Um, it's an NA car. That that car was the car that they recorded the sound to replicate the 787 on Gran Turismo. That's it's the coolest. Which is kind of a really cool thing to like be able to claim. Um, and he is an Ohio local. He yep. runs a shop here, I think, in the Columbus area. Yes, but it's uh, in the Columbus. I hear it's it's kind of like the tiniest little shop. But it is. But the they build the craziest shop. things. Yeah, lots of multiple, lots of like two, three, four rotor cars in there. Josh Halka on screen, uh, very fast this year, has a, a record of winning events, a number of them. He's spent a lot of time uh, since his last event really fixing a lot of little problems on that car. So I actually really admire uh, the amount of work that both he and his dad do on, on the car between sessions. I yeah. mean, uh, he will say that that car in particular, even as, as kind of mild as it looks, uh, they spend roughly... 10 minutes of service for every one minute on track. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, they, they, we say, you know, street mo or street class is kind of the entry level class, but that doesn't mean that it's not a lot of work. Well, and, and, and I, I would add class. to that by saying, like, they work hard to do the, the, the preventative maintenance and things. They do ball joints. They, they check the car over and over and yeah. over every time they go out. And that hopefully gives them the opportunity to run well when they get opportunities on track. Yeah. Um, I know some drivers, when they come in from their session, will park the car and get out, sit in a chair, and hang out Just for a couple of hours. Feet up. And uh, that works well if you have a car that's super reliable and super dependable. But if, if you're coming to win, you don't want to leave anything to chance. Man, I can hear. We're, we're in the broadcast booth. I can hear this car on the front straight from the back straight. Yeah. And and I have headphones on. Yeah. It's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. I love that sound so much. Um, here coming through uh, China Beach into madness. Uh, car looks really, really planted, uh, stable at speed. I, I think Logan will say that he's, he's, he's certainly not the fastest driver in the grid, but he does like coming out and running this car, and he runs pretty well. Well, I can appreciate that, you know. It's not always about being absolutely the pointiest end of the of the field. Sometimes it's just about having fun and showing your car off. Yep, and and that car being an NA car, it's certainly not. I mean, I think it makes good power, but oh, I, don't I think it makes like impressively good power. Still, I don't do you, think. Do you have a number? I don't remember. I've talked about it in the past uh, on on the podcast I do, and he actually came and corrected us because I was low. Is that right? On the number. I thought I, I remember him but, telling uh, me it, he's got different tunes, but yeah. like. Uh, he would run anywhere between four and six. Yeah, I think. I think that that's about right, which is crazy for such a small displacement engine being yeah. naturally aspirated. Well, I bet it gets one miles per gallon. Uh, they're not known for their mileage uh, rotaries. So uh, actually, that that kind of uh, brings me to a point about when the 787B won at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Yeah. Um, how much faster did it have to be than everything <laughs> else to offset the lack of fuel economy? The amount of time it spent in pits. Yeah. But just a an unbelievably well executed car, lots of custom body work. It's very pretty. Uh that car's a shining example of uh not all show cars are race cars, but all race cars can be show cars. Yep. Um that's a really good example of that. The car Actually, looks I would say the same thing about Brandon Randbeck's Twitch. Park. Twitch yeah. is a very pretty car. Yeah. Safety truck out. Hopefully not too much of a problem. Looks like um, just rolling around through turn one. Checker on that session. Timing's still not quite up and running yet. Maybe it's on. Uh, it's we not on race hero yet. Did we check race monitor?
So uh, Dewey DeWitt Dewey. pulling off uh, into a uh, kind of a, an access road, making sure that we don't black flag the session, just finishing up here in time attack uh, run group A, waiting for B to release here in a couple of minutes as they pick up Dewey. One of the nice things it seems about this track, being that it's a pro track, is it's got a lot of places for drivers to be able to safely pull off in the event of a problem with the car. Absolutely. And allow the session to continue without having to be black flagged, which is really nice. So uh, I know for a lot of drivers, this is kind of a billboard track, something yeah, that absolutely. they uh, they really like coming here and um, take every opportunity they can to be here at least once a year. It's got a lot of history to it. Which Certainly. Which really you know, plays into that. And uh, lap times here are quick. Um, it's a it's a really fast course. I don't know if you've seen IndyCar run here, but they they run around in under one minute. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, grid life overall record right now: James Houghton's one twenty three four from I think two years two ago. two or three years ago. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, a full twenty three minute seconds faster yep. than than the fastest grid life car. That's insane. Um, and and uh, I love James to death. Uh, I do not expect that record to stand if things go well this weekend. No. There's a, f a handful, well, I would say at least two cars for sure that could really put a hurt into that record. I, I think what we saw at PPIR with Ferris's car is, um, you know, when it gets the opportunity to stretch its legs, there is a lot of time to be captured. Yeah, beyond impressive. Um, especially here, and I, I know that the back straight here doesn't seem particularly long, but for some reason it's it's very, very fast, and cars that make a lot of horsepower should be 160 plus easy oh, I uh, think before the brakes up. So uh, Ferris went 168 at PPIR. That's so crazy. So he will be faster than that, I assure you. <laughs> That's so crazy. Uh, we were talking about it. This, this track is faster than you think it is in sections. Uh, and some friends and I were talking about it last night. Uh, Dalton Klein and his orange track mod Corvette with the sequential. The top end of the of six gear in that car is 170. Uh huh. And I don't know that he's going to get there, but I think he's not going to be far off. Of yeah, it. I agree. Um, does what what sequential is in that car? Uh, a Samsonis. Okay. Man, that car's so loud. <laughs> uh, we've got we got Forerunner buzzing in our ear here on the uh, side of the track. Um, looks like Dewey getting off track now, right? Uh, kind of accessing in uh, turn two at Keyhole. Yeah, and I uh, know he had some transmission issues uh, at PPIR. Found of found some fixes. Hopefully, it's not more of the same problem for him. Yeah, let's uh, let's hope it's not that. But a very good looking car. The livery I think was designed by Rob Wilkinson, and it is the car has been called the Boogeyman for a number of years, and now we've got reference to the Boogeyman on yeah. the side of the car. One of my favorite cars and one of the most interesting people at Grid Life. Yes. What a character. And uh, I, I'm told he was uh, featured recently in the uh, new Discovery Series uh, yeah. Getaway Driver, a which I've been watching Grid and uh, Grid Life have enjoyed. So uh, Grid Life drivers that I've seen so far are uh, Jackie Ding mm -hmm. has been in it, and I know that Tiffany Kelly was featured as well, oh, but I right. don't know if that episode's been released yet. Drivers, uh, looks like they're sitting in our false grid, which is a little bit uh, away from the main grid. We've got lots of people uh, gridded up and uh, not enough room. So uh, <laughs> we, we do things in false grid. It gives us a little bit more more time and, and opportunity to stage, and um, cars are released from there. So, so many cars here this weekend. A full house. So uh, I return to uh, Grid Life Track Battle in the uh, green silver and yellow m3 on screen or i think that's not an M3. I, I think it's, it's a just a was just a 335 um, I, I, he I is uh, that's mike pagano yep. and uh he likes having the title of the most horsepower in street mod <laughs> um to the point where it's almost not drivable but yeah. he does enjoy having it yeah uh, i think he said when he really turns it up it gets to be between 850 and 900 i believe a dct equipped car yep and uh, he said he's uh, mechanically things are assembled and in, uh, just like Alex Moss uh, done a swap into that chassis. Uh, his his biggest challenge thus far has been working on tuning and making sure that the car drives the way that you want it to. He's never driven the car on track yet, but only driven uh, on the street. And so this will be his first test in this car to see if this is like dialed in. It's been almost a year since we've seen him, is it? I think I that's think. right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he had an incident, uh, I think it was a couple years ago at Speed Ring, and has rebuilt the car and um, always a good sport in the yeah. track. So 
Really cool car. I, I think he was talking with Alex during one of the drivers' meeting, Alex Moss, um, about uh, programming on the DCT. He said he doesn't like the way the car downshifts, and so he's he's talking with Andy and Alex about how things are programmed in their setup. Also on track, uh, I think Nick Gardner and um, uh, who else? So White Evo is that Ben Lynn? That's uh, that could be Kobe Shield or it could be Jacob Bodenauer. Bodenauer, they're double driving this weekend. Yep. So uh, Kobe's been doing some wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff with another series for this year, but was excited to come back and hang out with his uh, Gridlife family. So holds a lot of Street GT records yep. across the board. Yeah, absolutely. I think he uh, set a record that's not been beaten in any of the events that he went to. I think he holds the record here, yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah, his 132.8 in Street GT. That's a fast time. Fast time. And uh, I think that's Dallas Reed on screen. Dallas Just Reed. The, the, most the most insane looking car. It's the most bizarre, <laughs> wild <laughs> looking thing. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, he's having a good time. One of the things I think is cool about that rear wing setup, that's uh, three of the cords that Nine Lives Racing sells. Okay. Uh, so he bought them as builder wings and then built his own wing out of their airfoils. Oh, their cords. okay. So um, really showing the flexibility of, of that product. What a bizarre thing. Yeah, LS powered, big old turbo. And they, they, they put it right where you can see yeah. it. Yeah, well, you can't build under hood temperatures if the turbo's not under the hood. <laughs> I think was maybe part of the concept there. Smart. Yeah. Uh, cars coming through madness. This is such a fun corner. Um, you really don't see it on screen as much, but uh, as you make that corner, the rear end of the car does get light, oh, and, sure. and you run the risk of losing the back end if, you, uh, if you're not steady with your throttle there. This is my first time here, and one of the things we noticed when we were kind of driving around looking at the track was that there's a lot of elevation change here. Absolutely. It's um, – it's, and it's – it's an awesome place to be. There are a few tracks we go to annually that are just really um, like picturesque places with yeah. lots of spots to camp and to yeah. to spectate. And this is this is a circuit where you can drive around and see almost everything. Yeah, we were able to get uh, we were kind of cruising around just right after the drivers meeting, checking things out because I'd never been here before. And um, yeah, it's it's a really cool facility. So we, uh, we actually just got uh, a message from our friend Ferris Khartoumi. He told me he did a 123.7 in traffic, so good for him. So three-tenths off of James's record in traffic. Good for him. Good Lord. Looks like we might have some timing coming up now. Excellent. Really so get some things going here. A 23.7. Holy cow. What a, what a wild machine. Well this weekend already. Is that Tom Hulk I see? Is he yeah, running he has his own car this now. weekend? Yep, he has instead his own of, car now uh, instead of double driving. Well, I knew he had his own car, but I think pe previously uh, we'd only seen him in HPDE. Right. So, so that's, now now that's they're both really doing cool. they're both doing that. Father son have come to all the events together, and they started out I think tent camping uh, in the last few years, and this year kind of leveled up. They just bought a uh, a C class RV so they yeah. can hang out at the track. And uh, you and your RVs. I, uh, you know what? If you're going to come to the track, there's no better way. <laughs> I can't disagree with that, but um, they have taken it one step too far. We can talk about that <laughs> on a separate podcast. Uh, also in this group is Patrick Darty, who has a almost completely stock Civic Type R. But Patrick is a wheelman. And if anyone wants to know how fast a stock Civic Type R can go on a track, just pay attention to what Patrick's doing. One of your favorite cars. Absolutely. I know. It's, it's such an interesting, usable car. I have, um, in my regular life, not in my grid life, in my regular life, I have uh, kind of an annoying commute. I would really like to buy a Type R, but I don't want to, like, just burn it to the ground by putting, like, monotonous highway miles on it. So I think I'm going to go yeah. the opposite way and just get something super cheap. That's no fun, though. Yeah. Uh, who else, who's on screen here? Are you familiar with this? Uh, is that a GS? I'm not sure. It's a street G GT car, I believe. Um, one of the exciting things about doing commentary is we get to learn <laughs> a, a whole bunch of new drivers. Because yeah. people, um, you know, this, this field is packed. I think we're expecting around 100 cars to set times in this first session. And uh, 
that, I mean, that's a lot of people to get to know. Yeah. Um, how impressive has Grant Walker been in the last couple of events? So that car a few years ago um, looked the part. That would be the mechanical advantage racing Miata? Yes. And um, certainly looks the part. It looks like a time attack car, but it's in his last couple of events, turboed. Uh, he ran uh, with, I think, with SCCA TT Nats at Gingerman a couple of weekends ago mm -hmm. and did a 31. Oh, really? That's a fast time. Getting down in there where um, we'd like to see him. And That's so, awesome. like, uh, it's been great to see the driver development in addition to, to complement the car development that they've Absolutely. done. So, be, I mean, any person going that fast at Gingerman is driving hard. Yeah, that's impressive. Car number 61. I th that looks like a GS to me. A lot of people say that's the C7 to own if it is. The GS. I, I'm a big fan of the GS. Yeah. Uh, who else on track? Nick Kors is in his 8th gen Civic Si. Turbocharged. Makes more than 650 out of his really? front-wheel drive street mod oh, car. Man, I didn't realize that that was that serious of an injury. Uh, yeah, he posted a dyno wow. sheet on Facebook uh, last week. Wow. It's a lot. That's crazy. Um, I don't know how long it'll hold together, though, right? One of the one of the challenges of, of taking a lightweight, small front-wheel drive sedan mm -hmm. uh, and putting all the power through it is all the components on it are small. So even <laughs> if they're sturdy, they're still small. So, like... How big or how sturdy can you make a uh, transmission if yeah. it, you know, is the size a uh, little bit bigger than a basketball? Yeah, those transmissions being kind of notorious for being weak, too. Yep. And uh, he has petitioned, not yet successfully, but petitioned to allow for dog boxes. And... Uh, in street mod, correct? In street mod, which is uh, a sticking point. It's because a big ask. It's I know a big you guys ask. have really been kind of leery of that jump. Well, it's it's uh, an example of a transmission that has never been uh, uh, installed into a factory car from an OEM. And I that, mean, sure. to us, feels like the separation between a street-derived car uh -huh. and a track-focused car. And that, that, to us, that's one of those dividing lines. Grant um, Walker there on screen. Man, that car's looking good. Yeah, he's he is hauling the mail. Good for him. Moving. 130, that's moving along. Yeah, that's real quick. So exciting to see that car hustling. Uh, Nick Kors doing a 33 is not slow. No, a 33 is, uh, 133 is real quick. Uh, I think in, in a street tired car, uh, anything, anything under 130 is really, really fast. Yeah. I know that a few years ago there was some discussion among our grid life staff if there had been any production tired car that had gone under 130 and i think tom o'gorman uh, went out and drove drove a couple quick laps that were uh, 29s and, and then, then more and recently uh, we've seen like some an 20 ACR Viper, I yep think? and then more recently we've seen some 28s i think but uh, that's as fast as we've seen street tire cars go so nick improving on his own uh, street mod front wheel drive record previously a 136.8 so a big big improvement there for him which is really cool to see so who else on track luca barbarous in uh his i think he's got a bright blue uh evo 9 very good looking car um let's see got some skids coming around oh. here through our headphones i hope everyone's all right <laughs> uh let's see Ben Lynn, who uh, kind of debuted here last year in his Evo, struggled um, through the event, was not really pleased with his performance. I bet he's eager to to put down some good times this weekend, and I'm sure we'll see it all on their Gears and Gasoline channel. Do you watch Do you watch the Gears and Gasoline YouTube? Absolutely. YouTubes? I really, really enjoy the, uh, the content that they produce. Yeah, they do a really good job. And I've thought more than once about buying that insight from them. <laughs> Uh, I can't even tell you how many times I have watched their Grid Life Road America track battle recap from a handful of years back. Oh, yeah? Where they talked to James Houghton. Oh, yeah. And he talks about what time attack is to him. Yep. And uh, it still makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up when I watch it. So I, I think you mean Road Atlanta. Or sorry, Road um, Atlanta, yes. But he, he talks about the the commitment that he personally feels like he has to give right. in order to compete at the highest level. Yeah. And um, it, I, I think it's extraordinary because 
um, you know, it, it's a hobby and it's a passion, but, you know, outside of his uh, wife and kids and work, that's what he does. Yep. Like every minute of every day is thinking about time attack. And like that, that sounds obsessive, <laughs> but at the same time, if it's what you love, then uh, more power to you, I suppose. It's kind of what you have to do to be at the pointy end of just about anything competitive anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, competition is tough and yeah. going out and setting personal bests, regardless of where you're prepped is always an awesome thing. Um, but some of the drivers that are running at the front here put everything they have. And some, I mean, in many cases, it's not dollars. Sometimes it's because dollars won't buy wins. It's a, you know, a, an effort argument where, where these people spend time thinking about what it, what it will take to set the car up better. Maybe it's not money. Maybe it's, you know, we need to change this or we need to tweak this or set, you know, change the alignments or whatever. These people are working on their cars all the time because they enjoy doing it. Yeah. So chasing the Fox body around of uh, Dave Ottavray. Unlimited class this weekend. Uh, he, too, is doing a DCT swap into a 240. I think that's right. Is that? Oh, I, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, he has a YouTube channel as well. Okay. Lots of lots of YouTubers that can drive around here. Yeah. The popular thing to do these days for sure. And I think that's Luca Barbaros on screen. Yeah. Coming into the keyhole, which is named because of the chicane on the club course. On the pro course, drivers just run straight through. Um, motivation for doing that is on the club course, when you take that turn in into the chicane, um, you're you're really really close to traffic from the other direction on the other side of the track. Ah. So um, in general, Grid Life believes that is this is the safer layout for a competition, and it's it's the pro course. Right. It's kind of fun to be able to compare our time attack times to you know IMSA classes and stuff like that, just to kind of see where those cars lay uh, time wise. So. Um, it's cool when we're able to run similar track or same tracks with the same layouts. Absolutely. And uh, a few years back, actually, I came here to spectate for uh, IMSA and uh, got a chance to hang out with some friends at the uh, the Wayne Taylor Racing Program. And it was the, the, the Daytona prototype, the DPI stuff, <laughs> is just the most wild stuff yeah. that you'll ever be able to get close to. Because um, I, I, I'm a big F1 fan, uh, but if you go to an event, if you were – you know, if you're just a general admission ticket holder, you, you don't get anywhere close to a car. Yeah. You, like, uh, I don't know, 50 feet or more is as close as you can be. And if you go to an IMSA event, you can stand next to the, 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 the prototypes. It's, it's just so crazy. Looks like we're checkered flag on that session. So Grant Walker coming out on top. What a fast and flying time a 130.1 that is moving it for any me especially for the first session of the day yeah um i don't uh, know how much experience he has here or not but i'm sure he has opportunity to improve the rest of the weekend the weather is looking pretty good right now um for the remainder of the weekend and let's see what, what is what does the forecast for us look like looks like we've got uh potential for rain not not a huge potential but potential for rain tomorrow and uh, Sunday looks clear. It's going to be warm, but, uh, you know, this this track, man, it's just very fast. Yeah. Uh, now that I'm here and I've seen this facility, I kind of wish I would have brought my, my family with me. I didn't do it this weekend. Well, uh, there are a few tracks that we go to that I would say are exceedingly family-friendly. Um, Blackhawk Farms. Yep. Gingerman, of course. Of course. Uh, and Road America Road and this America. place. Um other other tracks, of course, bringing families are fun, but the shade and the trees, I mean, yeah. it's it's a camping type environment, and I think that makes things really fun. Yeah, this is a really cool place. If you have a chance to explore the infield, you can actually go see pretty much all the corners. Um, watching, even watching pro cars go around madness is really interesting because if yeah. you like try and make a pass there, uh, being offline is is uh, you run a really high risk of losing the car. <laughs> Race control and, and stewards probably uh, probably checking those times. They're like, I find did, it you, funny did you see how, how fast yeah. Ferris ran? I find it funny how often uh, 
we come to tracks and the the track officials say oh you know th- you're not going to go that fast and then first session out like 10 people blow these whatever the arbitrary time is out of the water just totally destroying it and and like even uh, the story at road america where they were like, "Is our timing circuit broken?" No, uh, race control told uh, told us that the person uh, in this case it was James. James had just run a 208, or no, this was after his 211. Uh, race control, who had been working race control at Road America forever, yeah, said, "There's no way that time's real. He had to shortcut the course." <laughs> uh, the next session, he went out and ran a 208, and the guy just uh, like had to eat crow. I mean, it was. Oh man, <laughs> these cars are very, very fast, and they are focused for time attack. Uh, but but something I like to see actually uh, out of the street and street modified groups are the multidisciplinary or multi-event um, effort that some of these cars put in. Um, Jackie Ding has run you know time trial series and uh, time attack series. Alex Moss has run one lap of America and uh, King of the Mountain in that car, mm-hmm. uh, which which is an autocross and also uh, runs very fast here in time attack and so. Those cars, I think, are the the jack of all trades. Um, they're good at a lot of different things, and that makes them really interesting to me. Yeah, kind of surprised to see that Jackie didn't bring the super here, being that he is currently the street mod class record holder. I I believe that's right. And uh, what what's interesting is Sean Kremsbeck's here, and oh. uh, Sean <laughs> last year ran very fast, very very fast here, and. Uh, uh, he just came off of a kind of a quick win at PPIR. Struggled mechanically with some uh, wiring issues. I think some ABS trouble or something like that. Took him all weekend to get dialed in at PPIR. And then the very last session yeah. shaved, on, I think, eight seconds off of his Sunday. time at, uh, uh, out, to, to take first position. Went out, took first uh, in one of the first laps of that session. And then uh, did a cool down or two and then through you know, decided let's go again and shave off another three tenths off of what he had already bested the field by. Uh, I was standing right next to Dewey when that happened and he was less than happy. <laughs> well, there, there are, uh, we, we see a lot of drivers come through our series and you can, the, the ones who are fast, you can kind of break them into two camps. Uh, some drivers that are fast will take the entire weekend and shave time and shave time and shave time and and be quick by the end. Yeah. Some drivers are aliens. Ferris is an alien <laughs> and Sean's an alien. Sean is an alien. Like Absolutely. maybe he'll do one or two hot laps all weekend and it'll be good enough. Yeah. What a freak. <laughs> I don't understand it. I just I can't fathom that. But uh, mid Ohio here, I think about an hour outside of Columbus, a little bit north, and yep. uh, easy drive to get here. Uh, I drove from Kentucky in my gigantic RV, <laughs> and uh, really enjoyed the drive. And we're up here now, and uh, uh, it's it's a fun place to hang out. We got here pretty late last night. It was well after dark because we lost a tire on the stacker trailer that we were towing. Uh, because no trip can be uneventful for us. It's well, just not uh, a, a bit of a story about that um, triple axle <laughs> trailer is, uh, as, as it's been described to me, uh, Dalton got such a deal on the trailer that the money that he has put into the trailer just in hubs yeah. uh, doubles the, the, the total expense yes. of the trailer. Yeah, uh, he's got three new tires and all new hubs. We need three more new tires. Uh, but yeah, he'll be well above what he paid for it just in hubs and tires. Yeah, keeping it on the ground. So that me out of there on screen. Uh, saw that car rolling through tech last night. What a wild little machine! Got it a V8 looks, in it. Independent it looks throttle really bodies. Shot. Looks really cool. Really? Do you know who it is? I don't remember offhand now. My goodness, what a cool looking car! Yeah, it was really, really sweet. Um, I wonder, I'm, I'm speculating, I wonder if Winning Formulas prepared that car. Because it looks, stylistically, it looks similar. So if you're watching the stream and you know who owns that car and who built it, uh, send me a text and I will <laughs> uh, uh, call out the shop who put that car together. Very cool looking, though. Holy cow. Yeah, really ominous. So independent throttle body sticking up through the hood. Uh, you can never go wrong with that. 
I'm I'm more of a run your air filter kind of guy. Nah, life's too short to run air filters. I mean, I, if you can afford to re replace engines, if you suck up a rock, then <sighs> I mean, you put them out the hood. There's no rocks in there. It's <laughs> fine. Oh yeah, there's What's never the any tire debris that happens. What's the worst that can happen? Uh, or the C8. Who's got the C8? I'm not sure. Street GT class. I really, I think we talked about this on the last stream. Uh, I really like the design and styling of those cars. Yeah. Really, and really uh, cool. especially in black and in white, they look really sharp. Matt Williams this weekend in Club TR. Jumping up to an early lead there, 145.5. Uh, that's kind of a fresh build for him. His RX-7, his the FC RX-7 turbo car. Um Really pushing the limits of what that engine can make power-wise uh, within the rule set. Yep. So very excited to see how well that car goes. When I talked to him last night, he was kind of 50-50 uh, on whether uh, he was going to be able to keep that engine together or not. So uh, <laughs> He's I, I very, love very talking pessimistic with about it, but I think it's not as bad as he leads it on to. I love talking with Matt about his love for... Rotaries, Rotaries, yeah. Because he will be the first to admit that there's, like, it's not a good track car. And, you know, he it, it, it lets him down sometimes, but he loves it anyway. Like, it's, it's just you can't help what you love. Well, I think that, uh, I mean, a lot of people say that, that the rotary engine lives longer when you just ring it out, you know, when you really grab it by the neck and, and give it all it's got. And so... You know, that's kind of what you do on track. So, I guess. Um, I don't know. Some people tell me that they're not as bad as as the stereotype says in track use. Rolling through pretty so. quick uh, into turn one. Then. Yeah, that car looks planted, very sorted. He is the top. Bronson Mc... Mm. I'm not even going to try that last name. McNemer? <laughs> A 139.0, oh, pretty fast. Well, it really depends on where you put the em emphasis. It could be McNamar. Yeah. It could be McNamar. Track mod car. Good looking. Man. Yeah. So coming into the braking zone at China Beach, uh, make your right-hand turn on your way up over Madness. Steady on the throttle and uh, wake your, uh, make your way down through. So I hear that sand trap at China Beach pretty famous for trapping cars, uh, for keeping them. Yeah, I've heard that, <laughs> and I've heard uh, I've heard that Adam once lost brakes. Yeah, uh, on his way into that corner. Yeah, one of his least favorite stories that he probably shouldn't have let out into the world. <laughs> As it turns out, you should put fresh brake fluid in your car, not it's old used brake fluid. It's very important. Adam's Adam doesn't have a reputation for um, maintenance. I don't think that's true. I think you give him a harder time than he deserves. <laughs> I think he's just a busy man who does the best he can. Oh, well, I mean, you know, sometimes your best just is to get <laughs> up, Adam. <laughs> well, the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, uh, on our trip to Coda last year, we did the support series with GLTC at uh, Super Lab Battle. Mm -hmm. Number of uh, air brake related issues on his RV that probably may have not been an issue had Adam been more predisposed for general maintenance. Yeah. I mean, he didn't know it was a problem going into it. Well, that's not his fault. I mean, if you don't look, you don't. Ever, you never find those well. problems. <laughs> Uh, GTR on track, and I know that this is a, you know, th this is a car that has a lot of reputation for being quick on track. Yeah. But quite honestly, I've been affiliated with Gridlife since 2016, uh -huh. and there just aren't that many cars on track. No, not that many GTRs. Uh, PPIR two weeks ago, we had one that was very successful. Uh, Mike McGinnis and his very fast car, very fast car, did really well. Uh, but yeah, not a lot of really successful, well-driven GTRs have come to grid life. And uh, I don't think it's necessarily the expense because there are some cars here that are really high-end. Um, I don't know what it is about that car. Maybe it's just because of its weight. I wonder if it's just too expensive to run. They certainly have found a place in the drag racing community. Certainly. Uh, and I, I don't know if that's just kind of the group of people that bought them. Maybe. And, if, I mean, I know that that car drives around uh, it's it's curb weight 
yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but there's there is no hiding on the the use of consumables, the weight of a car. Kind of cool to see the GTR being chased down by a Supra, another car not exactly light on its feet, but definitely has been more of a darling to the track community. Yeah, and, short time and Jackie has, uh, Jackie Ding, our, one of our street mod drivers, has done an extraordinary job showing the potential of the platform. Um, the engine is, is uh, really robust, as is the transmission and the differential. I don't think he's had very many issues with nope. the major driveline, and... Um, so that that Mostly makes a car that's fun to drive. The computer being the biggest problems for him. Well, I, you Finding can kind of break the cars, um, the, the time attack groups, into a couple of categories. And one is uh, new cars that have really high performance potential from the factory. And one is old cars that have been modified to be able to run as fast as the newer stuff. And both, um, it, you know, if you're, if you're interested in breaking into time attack, you kind of have to make that decision early. And if you're driving a new car, a lot of your effort is actually spent uh, finding ways to work around the electronics integrations. Yeah. Uh, because let's say if you swap coilovers or something, the car knows the components that are supposed to be there. And if you take them off, you're going to get trouble codes and you might get changes in the driving dynamics as a consequence. So like defeat devices and resistors in place of things <laughs> is uh, that's a thing. Yeah. There's always, well, there's a will, there's a way. It's just, it's a lot of work. So we're seeing Checker now on Time Attack Group C as we wa make our way into D. And uh, kind of on the back end here of, of Run Group 1, um, a lot of uh, cars that will be here are cars that I know to be a little bit slower and also drivers that I'm not immediately familiar with uh, either their skill level or um, their their history of pace. Right. And so here in this first session, you could very well st still see cars that are quick, um, but uh, they may be new to the grid life field. So things shutting down here, uh, kind of consistent times at the front end, 136, um, and then kind of going all the way up to 151. Um, not sure what we're going to see next, actually. Love our drone pilots. As you can see on the um, kind of the grounds here, lots of trees, lots of shade. Excellent place to walk and spectate. And uh, I guess if you fish, I bet there are fish in that pond too. <laughs> what a beautiful place. Our drone pilots are just the best. I think our camera uh, camera people are also the best. Well, I, I look to them for their great dancing on <laughs> the Skyjacker lifts. Oh, no. Start this early already, huh? So uh, kind of the last remaining drivers taking checker here. I would expect the track to be clear with the release for Group D here before long. Look at that guy. That's a trusting man. <laughs> that was always like, that's the first thing I think of. Like, maybe it's because I have terrible friends. But it's the first thing I think of when I see those guys uh, wearing those goggles is, what would my friends do to me when I can't see what they're doing? Well, of course, they would they would run over and pull your pants down. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be messed with, undoubtedly. I mean, because we're all uh, fifth graders on the inside, yeah. that's exactly what would happen. We act like professionals. We're not. So I saw uh, James Rauch here. I'm not sure what he's driving. Um, uh, I, s I believe either it was his GT2 RS or somebody else is here with one, which I feel is probably not that likely. Well, I hope I didn't there make is an error and put him in the wrong run group. Uh, there's certainly a white GT2 RS here. Well, so. th then that must be him. Yeah. Very, very cool car. And at... Uh, NCM, which may have been the last event that he ran at with I us. I believe so, yeah. Uh, really... Uh, car and driver really coming together uh, and showing the performance potential of that car. I think our fastest overall that weekend? Uh, or no, did Jim, actually. Did, uh, did Jackie just edge him out? No, uh, a driver, I think it was Steven Luca, was the fastest with a 206. Oh, with the, the GT500. Yep. Yes. Uh, very That's fast right. cars at so the front end. Do you have a GT500 here again this weekend as well? So. 
sometimes it's fun to see those like wild factory race cars battle it out. Yep. You know, sometimes those battles are just as interesting as as these wild modified cars. Certainly. So. So uh, people getting set up, ready to camp. Uh, did you guys did you guys bring stuff to to smoke and barbecue tonight? Of course. What's on the menu? Uh, I don't think I think it's some sort of pork related product this time again. Uh, I'm not sure. I think that he was not able to get pork butt, so we have a tenderloin. If oh, I'm not mistaken. Boy. Okay. Uh, but I'm not sure. We got uh, we got a few things, but well, uh, ASM think, is hosting yeah. a block party tonight, yeah. which uh, is advertised to to basically feed just about everybody. Yeah, lots of um, Grid Life sponsors helping put that together. Yep, and uh, something remarkable about the oh, ASM yeah. crew. <laughs> my goodness, um, the ASM crew, whether it started as a joke or not, um, almost always the the beer of choice at the track is a Corona. Okay. So I don't know if that's a nod to the original Fast and Furious, but that's that's uh, just what they got. Well, I mean, that's fine, too. That crew always bringing out so many cars. Yep. And competing in, in so many different things. Uh, at PPR two weeks ago, drifting. Yep. So, um, and doing quite well at it. Yeah. Uh, I rode with uh, Pete Collins at Gingerman. Yeah. And his drift car uh, is really... Is nothing particularly wild, um, or is his main drift car, I'd say, um, but really, really fun. Yeah. I mean, uh, l trying to trying to get the car to do what drifting is at speed is just a strange experience. I love I love riding along. It's so much fun. Now I haven't had the chance, or I did have the chance, but I had uh, an obligation to ride in um, the Ultimaniac. I didn't. I didn't oh, get a ride. Oh, man. I would like to resolve this problem at some time Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. No drifting here this weekend. Nope. Just just racing. Uh, big, big field for GLTC. We've got uh, an awesome announcing crew for, for GLTC. Uh, Greg Creamer and Alex Moss will be joining the broadcast. Saw that. And, uh, well, uh, with, with Alex's accent, he instantly <laughs> has credibility. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I'll give you that. Oh, hello. What's going on here? <laughs> so drivers warming up now in Time Attack Group D. What do you expect? Uh, what do you expect the fast time for D to be? Well, I, it's kind of hard to guess in the beginning sessions because we're kind of still shaking out where people are going to be uh, down the road. You know, there I there were a handful of cars that certainly have. The ability to have some pretty wild pace out there. I saw, you know, a, a C6 Z06, uh, certainly a very capable car. Was that Peter Zhang in the blue STI? Um, you know, I think that was his car. It kind of looks like I his think car. That he might be here this weekend, yeah. So who knows where this could end up? Well, really, it's just going to be a. Uh, uh, an observation of how well I did my job on the front <laughs> end. So if we see cars in the 29s, we know that I did not do a good job. It's, you know, that's a tall order when we have a lot of competitors we don't necessarily see anywhere else. Yep. Or ever at all. You know, grid life is always growing. There's always new faces at every event. And so that's a, it's a big ask to have somebody say, hey, uh, grid these people and don't suck. Yeah. Um, and I, I think one of the challenges is, you know, the... We do this for safety, and it's always a little complicated on the front end of a grid life event because there are so many ticket transfers and swaps. The data uh, on the you know on the database side is never perfect. No. And so uh, my aim is to just do the best that I can. Is that uh, is that your boy Dalton not on track? Nope, nope. There's just a car to be that looks the same. Two orange C6s here this weekend. So uh, actually, I thought I saw him in false grid at one point in either B or C, and he didn't make it out which is a little bit concerning for me. So yeah, we may already be thrashing on a Corvette this weekend before the fun's even started. So uh, from uh, our friend Dewey DeWitt, I learned that driver number 310, that's Mike Coons. Mike Coons. I've heard uh, he's fast. Yes, our PPIR street class champion. Um, really, really put a hurt into the field. That's awesome. Uh, really impressive time. I think it was like a 10. 
I want to say a 103 or a 102 at PPIR, which quick. is really fast for a street car. Yep, absolutely. A um, couple of cars faster than the previous street class record this that weekend. So And and what we saw at Autobahn, and this is kind of a new development, what we saw at Autobahn as well is uh, the emergence of um, electric cars in street class as being viable competition yeah. cars. So that I, I want to say that that's... Um, we're, we're kind of approaching that tentatively. Cars fit currently in street class um, as stock power vehicles. Uh, as those cars become more more available to be modified in some way, we'll have to see if the balance of performance is, is putting them somewhere else. Yeah, if they can stay there. But uh, really what we're trying to do is make decisions with data. So we try to, you know, we pr try to put uh, different data boxes in the cars to get... Uh, a frame of reference for a fast driver in an electric car. How do you compare that to a fast driver in the front of the time attack field, like someone like uh, like Josh Hulk, as an example? Right. I think it would be really interesting to see somebody show up here with like a, a Model S Plaid, you know, advertised it, it capable of making over a thousand horsepower to the wheels, uh, a real insane, fast, un <laughs> kind of untouchable car. But a car that anybody can buy. Yeah, it's um, it's. Uh, I they're, am they're more really achievable than some of like the wild hypercars that we've never we never really see around here, um, and you know I think that could realistically see something like that at a grid life event, and I don't even know where you would put something like that. Yeah, like, it's it's hard to say. Is that straight and to track mod just based on a power door? <laughs> or Adam and I have kind of um, we've we've tried to make. Uh, We've tried to give ourselves the ability to class cars appropriately, right. uh, especially for things where we don't know immediately where they fit. Right. And so um, we kind of reserve the right to put cars where we think are most appropriate uh, at any given event. And this hasn't been a, an issue in a really long time, but uh, we also have the ability to combine um, car or classes if the balance of performance for that particular event is about the same. And so I think we saw that when we first did our event at uh, Streets of Willow, where we had, I think, street GT cars and street mod cars were running almost identical times. And so rather than have a podium that maybe only has one car, uh, here we have the ability to like reward performance, but do so in a mixed class. I like the way that you guys have kind of separated out some of the um, classes with in reference to essentially stock cars by msrp because it kind of does weed out some of the wild creations that some of these manufacturers are building these days absolutely and keeps them in a place that seems more fair well we, we kind of uh, review that msrp number on an annual basis yeah uh, to make sure that inflation doesn't draw cars out of a class if we think that that's where they belong right so like you know, an E36 M3 might fit in a very particular spot. Um, we don't want, or excuse me, an E46 M3 might fit in street class very well. Uh, we want to make sure that when we look at an inflation calculator that Whoa, that vehicle... Whoa, somebody like, way out in China Whoa, Beach. boy. Well, that, <laughs> that too, but there was somebody way out in the gravel trap off China Beach. Is that right? Well, I would yeah. expect then that we'll probably be taking yellow here before long if they don't get out. Really like that uh, uh, cutie wrapped Civic Type R. It's a good looking car. They have a whole tribe of cars at a lot of our events, and they're always good looking cars, and they're always fast. So Mike Coons running a 145 772. Pretty well off pace for street class so far i don't know if this is his first time here or anything like that um but certainly look to for him to improve his time drastically as the weekend goes on absolutely and there's there's a few spots on this track that are um a little intimidating i'd say where on the back side of the track in order to set yourself up for a, a particular corner you have the ability to um, or you have the obligation to put your car, the passenger side, as close to the, the, the metal barrier as <laughs> you possibly can. Where, like, 
a a point of pride might be touching your mirror on that uh, <laughs> on that piece of metal. I'm gonna pass on that opportunity. No thanks. Yeah, I don't have that in me. I don't have that level of commitment. So uh, let's see. More cars running. Fast time for this session is a 140.7. I believe uh, that is that orange C6 we were talking about a little bit ago. So a track mod car. And it does look like Peter Zhang is out on track with a 147. I think he's driven here before. I would imagine that he is, well, that's Peter Zhang. I was going to say, I think that might be him right there pulled off track. So it looks like he's in a relatively safe spot uh, parked here. I don't believe that we've yellowed or uh, checkered the session yet. Not so. yet. Whoever was out there in the gravel must have gotten out. Well, I see uh, I see a little bit of steam coming from the hood. I bet it's a Subaru doing well what Subaru's doing. Well, let's hope it's not too bad. Longtime competitor with grid life. Absolutely. All around really good guy. energy guy too. Yeah. He's always really fun he's guy. He's having fun in the paddock and he's he's into everyone else making sure they're having fun too. Yeah. So we certainly hope it's not too bad. And we'll see him out on track again. Loving S2000s. <laughs> so many S2000s in the grid life field. Uh, somebody, I don't even remember where, but somebody was talking about how uh, every time the, a grid life event happens, they uh, collectively jack the price, the average price of value of an S2000. Absolutely. <laughs> because there's so many of them here that are on track, and there's not that many of them to begin with. And uh, lots of them have been heavily modified. Uh, crashed, totaled, messed with, converted whatever. to wheel-to-wheel -wheel race cars. Yeah, because and, uh, even if you, you know, even if the car is not destroyed, once it's converted, it's it's basically staying. Yeah, it's way. it's pretty hard to take it back. So and so, uh, I have a friend who's kind of casually into cars, and he he sent me a message, and it was like, um, you know, should I buy this? Uh, it was a, a C6 ZR1, which is a car that I think is very cool. Yeah, and Certainly. he said I want to buy this as an investment, and I said, well, I, I mean. It might be a good investment. It's hard for me to know. I think that would be a safe place to put some money. I argued that I think an S2000, a clean one, is a better investment. And the reason I think that is because the supply of S2000s is a number that's constantly going down. <laughs> well, the the C6 Corvettes, they're, I mean, they're kind of just V8 S2000s. Uh, sure, but like... We certainly don't see a lack of them at track events. Well, the, the only C6 ZR1 that I've seen just like be heavily abused <laughs> on track is Jeremy Swenson's. Yeah. Right? So like, yeah, that's fair. you know, if, if, if Chevy made... A thousand C6 ZR1s. Probably yeah. they made more. I, I no bet idea. there are probably not at least 900 still in circulation. But uh, if you compare that to S2000s, the number that are still in circulation relative to the number of initial construction is probably a lot smaller yeah. fraction. Yeah, that's fair. Looks like we have a checker on this session. Probably closing her down a little early to do some cleanup. Get Peter Zhang off course. That's two Subaru toes that we've seen <laughs> in Time Attack A or Time Attack you E1. Know, I know that it's Adam's favorite joke in the driver's meeting uh, that Subarus do Subaru things. Please keep them off track if you're losing oil or whatever. But, And I know that it's all in good fun, but it is based somewhat in reality, clearly. I mean, it's they they have the potential to make a lot of horsepower and because they have that potential people will try and realize that potential well and they're very they're a very popular car there's lots of subarus here this weekend so statistically you're going to have that's true you know yeah, if i had to guess i would say it's probably the second most represented brand probably behind honda that's yeah. that's just a guess yeah. uh usually kind of people think when they think track day they think mazdas miata specifically that's not that popular of a car in this organization well, I, I as think compared to others. I I would say that the number of really focused time attack Miatas aren't that many. There well, are even a few. in GLTC, it's not a, a huge well, – the NC is probably more popular than, than the NA and NB, which is more the standard – track day car well I, I think the winning formula has shown that the NAs and NBs can be really oh I'm not saying really really not capable of good it. so it's like give Peter a quick toe he's uh, I believe on the back side of the track hopefully make his way in and then we will release time attack group E Honda big big field this weekend Honda Ridgeline 
Safety vehicles. So uh, the, one of the Honda factories is actually not that far from here. That's a, right. A few of That's our Grid right. Life drivers work there Yeah. Um, in Marysville, which is not far from where we are here at Mid-Ohio. Let's see. If Peter is telling him I don't know where my tow hook is, I'm going to be really disappointed. <laughs> we go over this every single driver's meeting. Make sure your tow hook is in your bumper. So probably a quick tow here and then on the release for E. I believe the last session for Time Attack, correct? That would be correct. Going through uh, E so and far. So we've got roughly 17 minutes now till the start of GLTC practice. Uh, the the mic is going to be taken over by Greg Kramer and Alex Moss, and I'm really excited to watch that. I think it's uh, interesting that, we, you know, normally we don't stream everything for GLTC. That's true. Qualifying and or, uh, practice and qualifying oftentimes not streamed on the weekend. This weekend, all of it start to finish, kind of a unique thing. Yeah, uh, I think um, the, the, the schedule of events and... and um, the focus on motors, uh, competition motorsport uh -huh. uh, has, has given us that freedom um, because we also uh, we don't have drift at this event, which means there are fewer things to cover at the event. A unique opportunity for those at home, though. I thought he was going to fly in there for a second. Well, I think that's what he wants you to think. <laughs> So uh, at any one of our events, we've got a few drones flying around, and it's uh, when they fly overhead and they do the crazy things that these particular drones yeah. can do, it's really fun to watch. Getting me sick just watching it. So uh, we're pulling Peter Sang off the track. We had uh, some of our Grid Life staff come in here to the production booth and, and do some yelling. So if you heard Sean Fenton, you can uh, send him a text and let him know that you love his voice. He's the nicest man. He is. So uh, actually, uh, Sean and I hung out at Ice Battle in Wisconsin in February. And place you'll never find me. <laughs> he uh, he had a, a, a field watch that I thought was really nice, and okay. I said, "Hey man, I, I think that watch is really cool." Oh, see this what is is a slippery it? slope, Abe. Uh, Watches are a dangerous and slippery. Well, slope. He said, "Well, it's it's just a Timex, um, but I'm glad you like it." That's where and they then, start. That's uh, where they get you. A, a month later, yeah, he bought me one. See, because Sean is an awesome person. No, he's a drug dealer, is what he is. Because watches are a dangerous. And I don't want to spend slope. money on expensive watches. Right. I just really like that's, this one. That's how everybody starts. <laughs> I've lost friends to watches. I'm telling you, man. Uh, They're dangerous. One of our lead instructors, uh, Eduardo Colazzo. I, I love that him, <laughs> his his girlfriend. I don't know calls that I've Eduardo. ever heard his full name <laughs> spoken. It, it's uh, it's Ed C Z on Facebook. Yeah, I just uh, know him as Ed. Um, Ed is is an aficionado for watches. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, it's a dangerous thing. Well, uh, I can't afford nice things because I just have I have one that's nice thing. That's not true at I all. I have one nice thing. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's fair. So actually, when I rolled up uh, last night, in, in your, I checked in. In your bus. Well, when I checked in with uh, registration on the way in at the gate, uh, Chris Stewart, uh, well, Gridlife co-founder, was uh, kind of manning the, the ticket booth. Yeah. And he just said, man, who's that person in that tour bus? <laughs> Is Reba McIntyre here? Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, man, it's fun to drive. Like, my first time driving it, it was white knuckle for like I 40 can't minutes. Imagine. Uh, it was scary. Yeah. Um, because it's different than driving a pickup truck and pulling a trailer because you're in a pickup truck and it feels familiar. Yeah. Uh, when you drive a full size Greyhound style bus, mm -hmm. it's a different thing. 
How many square feet is it? It's a lot inside. If it's is if it bigger than my twelve hundred square foot house? N- I don't think so. It's 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 like forty feet long and it's at least eight feet wide I plus the slide outs. So like, I mean, it's probably. I think my house is I don't about know, the same length. Four hundred square feet. I think my house is about the same length, but it's a good bit wider. Cause probably it's a house, uh, but. Yeah, you're not far. You're certainly bigger than pretty much every apartment I've ever lived. Well, in. I I can assure you that uh, my bus has more horsepower than your car has. Well, yeah, your bus has more horsepower than all my cars combined, probably. Well, most of your cars don't run. Well, I mean, even if they did run. <laughs> <laughs> so a uh, little bit more cleanup here as we wait for Time Attack Group E. If you're listening to the the sights and sounds of Adam and I just talking about <laughs> junk, uh, we're just filling in the time here. Sorry. What are we looking forward to in GLTC this weekend? I, it's a big field. It's a huge field, 50-plus cars. And Jeremy Swenson is here and yep. is second in the season-long points. Really? Yep. I, didn't, I uh, haven't looked at the points. Uh, that's, wow. He's, he's running Ooh. really, really well. Peter, up on the rollback. Well, you got that all-wheel drive stuff. Oh, yeah, he probably didn't want to flat tow it, did they? Uh, I'll give him that. Aaron Lichty is here. Emil Tab is here. Erica Till is here. All uh, of the ASM cars. The ASM cars are here. So it could. It, it's it, anybody's it, game. The winner for this weekend, you could pick any one of those five and still probably be right. Or wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, one of my favorite GLTC cars, it's a, a really unique car. Not um, for like, you know, for GLTC. Uh, Ryan Kristoff's. Oh, yeah, CRX. absolutely. Such a cool little car. Yep, and ha- I think has made accommodations to make that car fully competition yeah, legal. I've he's been watching him try and figure out the wheel and tire package that makes that car fit into GLTC better. Yep. So uh, put 15s on it, and they look massive on that tiny little Is car. Is that right? Yeah, it looks really funny. But it, it not in a bad way. They do look good. They're not like, oh, it's like 24s or something, you know, but um, – Certainly a, a giant wheel and tire package compared to what he's had on there. Well, the I, d- I don't know if you know. My bus has got 22 and a half. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Semi-truck life. <laughs> <laughs> so, a uh, quick tow in here now with the flatbed. Uh, hopefully, Peter's car is okay. Um, I don't know if that steam we saw was, was just things hot underneath or yeah. if he's had a, a major engine failure. Transmission, just as likely in those cars sometimes. It's a good-looking car, though. It is a really cool car. Really cool car. And I know that uh, we kind of razz on Subarus here on the broadcast, but there are a lot of really fast ones in the field. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, On any given day, just about any class can be taken by a Subaru. Probably, yeah. I mean, Street GT is safe. That's true. Yeah. But uh, pretty much any other class, there's almost almost any other class, there's a car that could take it. Yep. Um, Who... Who in track mod consistently runs really fast in the Subarus? You know, I'm thinking maybe. We haven't seen him. Um, it's not it a lot of track. They seem like they skip from street mod to. To just go unlimited? Yeah. Um, Richard Grossi from uh, uh, Canada, who, yeah. who runs CSCS up there, yeah. has been to our events before and is really it's quick. speed ring. Uh, um, one of the most insane time attack cars in North America. Certainly. But very fast. Also, uh, JC Minet is a track mod car. Yeah. Uh, very cool fast car. as well, yeah. um, but a West Coast guy, so we don't see him a lot of these mid- Midwest events. Yeah, those are cars we see more often at, like, festival. Uh, yep, definitely. So you see uh, John Raymond there in grid letting everybody know to make sure their helmets are tight and their uh, their their harnesses are, are strapped in. There is your favorite train of cars. Sunday Cups, now with more Mazda 2s. I cannot describe to you how excited I am to see a little bit of variety in that class. Yeah, it's it's kind of been dominated by Matt Williams, though, so it's hard to know if the Mazda 2s are going to have the performance to be able to, to, to dethrone the king. Yeah, so I got added to the, the Sunday Cup chat. Oh, boy. Uh, so now I have a bunch of insider info on all these guys. That's, I a, know there's sw- that's a swamp. <sighs> what a what a deal. Uh, some Kia Rios on their way this weekend. No kidding. Yeah, so we have we have a real interesting field in Sunday. Well, class. this is this is where the battle is going to be in Group E. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, we've got the Ford is. Festiva there as well. Not I don't a Sunday Cup car, but just uh, just appropriate. Yeah, Joe's one of my favorite track people. 
uh, and his car is one of the coolest cars. Last last event, PPIR, they brought out their unlimited class Festiva. Um, Which makes no sense. <laughs> I mean, you say that, but it was quick, and it was really cool. Uh, but that style of car we've seen before uh, in the track mod group. If I don't know if you remember um, the the K Swift yes. that ran yeah, at yeah. Uh, Midwest Festival a Another few years Another Canadian back. car we just, just don't get enough lightning of. quick. Yeah, uh, because it doesn't weigh anything. Well, and that car is mostly carbon fiber because the guy that owns it does that sort of thing. Yeah, um, commitment to custom fabrication when you're trying to make something that small go that quick. Yeah. A uh, uh, giant turbo K series doesn't hurt. Yeah, it makes makes all the all the power, and it weighs nothing. Nor or south of two thousand pounds. Yeah, it's if wild. I remember correctly. So, so uh, I think Lisa Keys driving Lil Red. Yeah, uh, I which is that's a, correct. a Civic Hatch. Um, one of our uh, main instructors, really cool person to hang out with. Uh, big nerd like me, so we get to talk science sometimes and. Uh, <laughs> uh, out here having fun in the Civic, which she drives really hard. Yeah. So oh, what, is Matt Williams track there? double driving? He has a Sunday Cup oh, car. Somebody as well. lost the sticker, it appears. Oh, bummer. <laughs> no, I don't think the fit made it. Well, car number one twenty nine. Oh, I, I think that might be both cars for Matt Williams. Okay, then he must have had someone drive the fit here. That that's possible, and. Uh, I've I've talked with Matt about doing a K swap into his fit because K fits are so silly and fun. Um, his argument for spec fit though, or Sunday Cup, is the best part about that car is that he can throw the keys to anybody. The car is always ready. Uh, last night in the aforementioned group chat, he posted on there, "All right, who took my fit? It's not where I left it." <laughs> to which I responded, "Did you look on track? <laughs> because that seems to be where it always is." <laughs> Because it just never breaks down. No, it, he runs that car really, really hard, and it is, uh, it is without question, the most dialed and the, the, the most record holder Sunday Cup car that we've seen. Yeah, he's our record holder here with a 151.7. We'll see if that can be beaten, but uh, if it is going to be beaten, it'll probably be by him. Uh, James Morgan won at Autobahn and took third at PPIR. And I know he's talked a lot of smack uh, about how he's going to be here very serious and ready to win. Oh, boy. So, yeah. it's, it's been exciting to see James move uh, onto the track more. I think he's really, really enjoying Sunday Cup. Yeah, one of my favorite grid life people, without a doubt. So Matt Williams with a 153.6. What was your best time Three. for Matt? Of course, come on. 151. All right, seven. so he's got a little work to do. 151. Volkswagen GTI, or maybe an R, I'm not sure. A Golf, let's go with it. Uh, it looks like a, a GTI badge. There you go. Another car we don't see a ton of, Volkswagen base products. But um, the the DSGs that are in that family of cars are very good. Yeah. Uh, a car that we're not seeing this year uh, is the Audi TTRS driven by Makai Hackbarth, who I won know. the to my won great disappointment. I know. <laughs> uh, who won the 2020 or 2019 One Lap of America? Yeah. I suppose. Um, I've been in that car, and I've been in that car on track. Um, the performance potential of the five-cylinder Audis with a DSG is frightening. Um, and it, it, it really, it's, it's available, and it's there. And with bolt-on parts, you know, 600 is easy, and it's fast. <laughs> so, so silly. I think a GTI like that would be a good GLTC candidate. Potentially, yeah. The, G the, the DSG in it and stuff like that. Well, uh, I think there are some ways to go about it, though, because uh, certainly, you know, saving time on shifting, you could do with a DSG. But if you do what Jeremy Swenson's done, you just don't shift. <laughs> yeah. Well, right? Like uh, when uh, he ran at Gingerman, he, he drove the entire, entire track in one gear. And so 
Well, you don't lose any time shifting if you just don't shift. Torque is a wonderful thing. Yeah. So many Sunday Cup cars. Look at all those yeah. guys. Beep, beep, just having a good time. Ryan Seiler out there. Uh, Club TR points leader for the season. Uh, PPIR winner. Finally, uh, it's exciting to see him having uh, gotten the win at PPIR. Yeah. He's been right there the entire season. Yeah. Uh, but battling just issues and a mechanical and, and just things not going perfect, which is often what it takes to win. Yeah, well, and then, you know, like the Gingerman weekend, spring kickoff weekend, he's never been to Gingerman before. Right. That is basically every other good life driver's home track. Right. So at a strong disadvantage there. And, you know, that weekend was better mechanically, but uh, continued to improve the whole weekend, but never found enough time yep. to get up where he was looking to be. Um, NCM, lots of mechanical issues. Autobahn, the rain wasn't helpful. We had a little bit of mechanical issues as well. Um, so really excited for him to finally be able to put it all together at PPIR. I bet it's a relief, too. And now you can kind of focus on this one. It's just like, okay, well, I've gotten the... I've gotten the one out of the way. Now it's just focusing on the rest of the season. Well, he's down on power in that class, uh, Club TR. Um, rules don't really allow a lot of power modifications. Right. And um, it seems that the rear-wheel drive K-swapped cars are a little bit down on power from their front-wheel drive K brethren. But you would expect uh, just because of a little bit less driveline loss. Right. Um, and but I what you get is potentially a little bit better drivability. I think they have a little bit better... Um, intake option okay and that you know i mean when we're talking about relatively low amounts of horsepower sometimes 10 or 20 horsepower can make a big difference absolutely um, and he's 10 or 20 horsepower down on most of the front wheel drive cars in that class so you know like we he know, he already kind of knows like coming into road america that's probably not going to be his track to win well, know? maybe what he would get, though, is uh, a better aerodynamic performance. Or well, we've or talked about maybe uh, he has a S2000 CR wing because that car was a street class car mm -hmm. previously. Um, and we've talked about bringing it with and maybe throwing it on the car because it is less drag than the Nine Lives wing that he has on there. Yep. Uh, and maybe at a track like that, maybe you don't want all of that downforce. But then the question becomes uh, – do you lose the downforce and stability? That's a speed? good question. So you know, um, it might be something we play with. I, I would, Im I would imagine that you're you're going to have to kind of dial that in uh, throughout the weekend. A few years ago, there was a really good battle in track mod between uh, Luke McGrew and Jeremy Swenson and Eric yeah. Fleming and and Paul Curley. Yep. And uh, interesting, Luke McGrew is a really, really fast driver, but he was driving his ACR, which has a mountain of aerodynamic performance. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but on a track like that, you wonder if 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 that additional aero uh, reduced his top speed enough so that he was uh, not at such an advantage at a track like that. Well, and the rest of that that group there, those are in those guys are Corvette drivers. Yep, at the time at least, um, and. Those cars are known for being very slippery from the factory. One of the lowest coefficient drag cars. Absolutely. From the factory, which is going to help tremendously. Um, Mid Ohio, I think more balanced. Probably. So we're seeing Checker here now on Time Attack Group E. That is the end of the Time Attack session. Uh, we want to thank everyone for watching. We want to thank our partners and. Uh, I think Adam and I are going to do a handoff to our GLTC crew here in a minute. So uh, stick with us and uh, enjoy GLTC practice.
Today's coverage of Gridlife's Track Battle Time Attack is being brought to you by Falcon Tire. Competition, proven performance. 303 performance. Premium protectants and cleaners exceeding expectations since 1980. Stable, ready, willing, stable. Momo, the official safety partner of Gridlife. And by HP Tuners. HP Tuners, connect, read, edit, write, and drive. We've been powering the American road since before it was paved. Our first breakthrough in motor oil was introducing it. And we've been reinventing it ever since. From the world's first high mileage oil to the world's first synthetic blend. There are those who change with the times and those who drive them. Valvoline, the original motor oil. The Falcon Azenus RT660 is the enthusiast's choice for ultra-high performance. Engineered for predictable handling and stability, the RT660 provides maximum traction both on and off the track. Your competitive edge has arrived with the Falcon Azenus RT660. Hawk Performance packs 100 years of friction dynamics into every product. Backed by Carlisle Brake & Friction, the world's premier innovator of industrial brake and friction components, Hawk leverages R&D tools in motorsports experience to deliver uncompromising performance on the street. There's no reason to settle for less. Choose pads that are race proven and street legal. Find the Hawk Performance Brake Dealer near you at hawkperformance.com. Here at FCP Euro, we take pride in the fact that each and every one of your orders is picked, packaged, and shipped by a fellow car enthusiast. We understand that you need the right parts and need them fast to complete that next project or get your daily driver back on the road. Take Roberto, one of the pickers in the distribution center and one of the key pieces to making sure the right parts arrive at your door. When he's not at FCP Euro, Roberto is driving his Mark V R32 to various car shows around the Northeast. When he's picking orders, he puts himself in your shoes and understands that you need the right parts to arrive at your door. So he takes the utmost care in making sure he puts the correct items in the box. To learn more about us, head to fcpero.com. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Mid-Ohio, where we are getting ready on the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course for practice for the Grid Life Touring Cup. And it's an absolute delight for me to be here. I'm Greg Creamer, joined by Alex Moss. And uh, we are looking forward to this a busy weekend in terms of Touring Cup racing action, obviously, as uh, we've got four races that are going to be unfolding. But we also have a practice. We have a qualifying. We have a shootout. And then there's all kinds of machinations, Alex, that are involved in uh, some of the formatting for getting the grids ready to go. So really a lot for us to talk about here during this practice session, not to mention some awfully talented <laughs> drivers and some very fast and interesting cars. And that's one of the things that I love about Touring Cup. That's right. Yeah, we've got uh, a lot of um, home-built cars, a lot of different variety of cars here to, that race with us at GLTC, and it's exciting to watch how those cars make speed in different ways um, and approach a lap time um, differently. 
And that makes it really interesting. And it really comes down to the classic power to weight, doesn't it? And uh, But there are little extra things that can be changed up on it. If you're running additional aero, you get a little bit more weight. If you're running a racing slick versus a street tire, you get a little bit more weight. There are certain things that keeps everybody bunched together. And when you look at the different tracks on the circuit, some tracks have favored some of the more high horsepower cars, not quite as hard in terms of uh, the toll on the brakes and the tires and the like. Other tracks tend to really be good for the lighter weight, more nimble cars. I think this track's going to really be that one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, not to mention, w we also have um, this track is a, a home track for many of our drivers here. So we've got a lot of drivers that are very familiar with the track. And then we've got some drivers who are, this is the first time here for them. So learning curve for some and just working it out for others here. The opening lap, when they release them, they sent them out under a full course yellow just so that everybody could see where the uh, corner worker flag stations are. Big thanks to all the workers that are out here for the weekend. I can't have an event like this without them. But now we are underway. This is full practice. It's a time practice. Doesn't really have any bearing on where you're going to start during the race. But it is the loan opportunity to get yourself comfortable with this track, with the car, get your car dialed in to be ready to go qualifying. And uh, big field here, and we noticed that a lot of cars were queuing up early in this beautiful bright blue entry of Tom O'Gorman from ASM Motorsports. Made sure he was front of the queue. Tom, pretty experienced driver in, in, in pro racing. Says he's really found a home here, but he still likes to get after it, and he was ready to go. Yes, he was. Uh, Tom's one of the, the drivers that joined us at ASM. Um, he's He's been here a lot, obviously. Um, he's been doing the, the GLTC racing now for two years. This is the second year. He's joined our team with Andy and, and Brandon and company for this. Um, and, and yeah, he's doing really well this year. Got some great aerial shots from you, uh, for you this weekend from a great crew running the drones here as part of this broadcast and giving you some great looks of uh, just the layout of this track coming out of the carousel. This is the front straight. If you're not familiar with Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, it's about two and a quarter miles long, the format. We're running 13 turns. This is turn one, and interestingly, first turn's fastest one on the track, and it is quick as you hustle through that corner. And you can see, I think that's Eric Coutille, who's right on the back there of O'Gorman. And one of the things about this series that is really a key factor to it, and it's something I love, is it's no contact. They really work that through. And one of their real mantras, if you will, is, if you've got overlap, if you're alongside the car, it doesn't matter how much, you have earned that piece of racetrack, and there's no door slamming, there's no cutting up you know, people off. And what it promotes, Alex, is some of the best side-by-side -side racing for corners that I've ever seen. It's really fascinating racing. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we were lucky enough to attend the driver's meeting, and there was a lot of talk about, hey, these guys are your friends that you're racing with. This isn't pro racing. They're your friends at the beginning of the weekend. Let's make sure that they're your friends at the end of the weekend, and the way you do that is by leaving the space that, that other drivers have earned. This is that section called the S's Madness. Is that great run up and over that rise, and then you head into the S's section of the track. This is, it does, you can't really see it from that high video shot, but that turn that we just went through right at the apex, there is a pretty abrupt rise and drop, bit of a jump there, and you've really got to have your car set up. It's a blind commitment approach and uh, get it dialed in. And that's one of the great things about Mid-Ohio. It's, it's a real driver's track, Alex. And it isn't, you know, there's a little bit of a dyno run from the exit of the keyhole down into uh, the uh, turn at the end of that long back straight but it's not that long, and the rest of it is all handling and driver. And if you've got that dialed up, you're going to be a factor as we have a look here at David Alessandrini. Yeah, yeah, real driver's track. Um, and, and again, I think we'll see that those drivers that have been here a lot will do very well in the early sessions. Um, all of these drivers are really, really good drivers, though. So um, the, the ones that have not been here before will get up to speed very, very quickly and, um, and will be there once the, the timing counts. Coutil up to the top of this practice session at a 131, a 136, I should say, 457. O'Gorman right there as well at a 137.4. And then Jeremy Swenson in that purple thundering Corvette uh, sits in uh, third at a 138.126. And you say, well, how can a Miata run with a Corvette? Well, again, it's that power to weight issue. But also, the technical rules for this class are pretty open. And as a result, you get some interesting engine swaps and the like in, the, in this category. And if you've got that big V8 in the car, it's seriously detuned to make that power to weight work, doesn't it? 
Yep, yep. Jeremy's uh, V8 is detuned, like you say. Uh, we think it makes about 240 wheel horsepower all the way from, I think, 50 RPM to 6,000 RPM. Um, that gets him into the power to w weight. He takes some penalties for the fact that he has this very flat torque curve, or very flat power curve, I should say. Um, so he gets penalized a little bit for that, but he has to weigh up the pros and cons when he's building his car to do I want to take this advantage and then take the penalty for it? Will that overall help me um, or not? Um, what we see is that some tracks it will help him and other tracks it will be a little bit of a disadvantage. And the other side of the coin too is you can want, uh, run a uh, racing slick, basically that, uh, that Hoosier DOT slick, or you can run a, uh, a street tread tire. And it's my understanding if you run the street tire, you get a little bit more of a weight break, don't you? Yep, you get a weight break and you can also run slightly wider tires as well. So okay. you can run a street tire in a wider width than you can run the Hoosier in. Um, and then you also get a little bit less weight. He just had a look there at that beautiful purple machine of Swenson, that uh, Corvette, hustling out of the keyhole. This is that long run down the back straight. There's a little bit of a kink. It's absolutely flat out down through turn three, and then it's pretty significant breaking down into turn four, which starts the section called Madness right here. And uh, you can run the outside through that corner as well. Up, the, the elevation change here is really significant. Then you plummet back down the bottom of that left-hander, then the right-hander right here, and this quick little kink to the left. It's more than a kink, it's a corner, and there's a big jump there that you go over, and then you settle in through turn eight, and then up into nine, which is this corner right here, and then the run through what they call Thunder Valley. And it's interesting, Thunder Valley, back when this track was first designed, actually had an S's section built in it, and after the first couple of races, the competitors went to the uh, owners at the time back in the uh, early to mid 60s and said it's just way too slow mm -hmm. so they straightened thunder valley out and now you just lead into the carousel which is right here as they're approaching the carousel and back onto that front straight get around this place in a hurry yeah yeah that's right um one of the things that that i find interesting and different about um uh, gltc racing and, and really promoting that that friendship Mm -hmm. um, is, as you and I would, were looking at earlier, Tom this week released a video um, on YouTube really for his competitors, uh, talking them through this track and, and giving them tips on what to be looking for, when to be braking, when to be turning in, what can get, what can get you caught out and, and what have you. And, and I think that's really unusual to try and help your competitors. Yeah, you don't see that in a pro series, uh, full-on pro series, that's for you. Dan Howard right there out of Delaware, Ohio in the uh, Tarmac 88 Mazda Miata. Having a little bit of an issue here. It's pulled off and stopped. One of the things they talked about in the uh, driver's meeting was there's lots of places here that have cutouts or actual loop roads that you can pull onto and said, you know, obviously we have short sessions, busy weekend, but lots of short, fast sessions. And they said, if you've got a problem, pull off, let the session continue. And that's what he's doing here. And we should talk about that. Four races over the course of the weekend each one paying full point. So basically, uh, there's no qualifying, uh, there's no pole point fast lap. It's strictly the races, yep. but with four of them and you're paying 25 to win, it's 100 points a weekend. But you have to get them the old-fashioned way, as the, as the old saying goes. You have to earn them because uh, it, you got to do that through four races. That's right. Yeah, you've got four races to, to actually score points, but then there's um, three other sessions here that, that um, are non-points paying. The first one being uh, this practice session where that we're in right now, which is really just for the drivers to see the track, shake down their cars and what have you. Uh, the second one that we've got coming up early afternoon here is our traditional qualifying session, uh, treated very much like a time attack session. All the cars go out, fastest lap puts them on pole for race one. Um, after race two, we also have a, another qualifying session we call the top 10 shootout, where the top 10 finishes from race two. We'll do another single lap qualifying session to set the top 10 of the grid. Uh, for race three. So in addition to the four races, we've got those three other non-points paying sessions. That look there at Seth Gale. Just sort of dropping back through the order a little bit. It's still Coutil up on top, but now uh, Hurdle has jumped up into the second spot. That's Austin Hurdle, the number 34 Nissan 370Z. And look at those margins. I mean, basically we're 2-1,000 separating first and second right now. O'Gorman's still right there 
in that third spot just to tick off. Luke McGrew has jumped up now into the fourth spot in the number seven Mazda. And that's one of the Duratec swap Mazdas. Explain that a little bit. Sure, so the engine swaps are essentially free for us um, in GLTC, so you can put any engine into the car that you want to put in. Um, so a very, co a very popular swap is the Honda K-Series um, into the Miatas and S2000s and Civics and what have you, because you get um, a very broad power band, which helps. Uh, Luke McGrew has, has taken a different approach with his um, Miata, and he's swapped in that Ford Duratec engine. Uh, into the car, and that's how he's, you know, that that's the solution that he's um, applied to this problem. Is that essentially a, fo uh, a Ford Focus m power plant? I believe so, yeah. yeah. It's a two-liter yeah. um, Duratec engine, I think. Two and a half, I think. Two and a half liter, sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, but you can take a smaller car and wedge a V8 into it. I mean, we've got a you couple could. competitors that are running a Scion FRS that have the V8 in it. Uh, they have V6s, I believe, oh, J-Series V6. okay. V6s, yeah. So the, the Kellys um, from the Myriad Motorsports, they run uh, J-Series, Honda J-Series engines. Um, I don't believe they're here this weekend um, competing. They were out at Pikes Peak a couple of weeks ago, though. Um, but, yeah, you can, you can put in any engine you want. Um, you just have to deal with that power to weight and then any penalties that are associated with that. So far this season, Swenson has had a fair amount of success. He's had a lot of races where he's run up at the front early and then that extra weight has taken its toll. Tires have gone off just a little bit and the like. But he does have, I believe, three wins on the season, so having a good year. Uh, but one of the things that everybody says about that car, and you talked about it, once it hits that power band, yep. it just stays in that power band all the way through the rev, the way that he's got that dialed up, as we have another look at him here. Yeah, that's right. Um, at Gingerman, in fact, he does not shift. He just leaves <laughs> it in, I believe it's third or fourth gear, and drives the entire lap in third and fourth gear. Um, he's got the torque curve and, and the power band to support that, and, and that's, you know, again, his solution to the, the GLTC problem. Emil Tab now making a nice run as we now have Coutil down into the 135. So they're starting to figure this track out just a little bit. Just to give you a little bit of a uh, target, if you will, Aaron Lichty last year here at Mid-Ohio turned the best lap seen in qualifying in the GLTC at 135.295. Uh, he was even quicker in the race at a 135.189, which would be the track record here. And already, early in this first practice, we're down within about three-tenths of that. Yep, three-tenths of a second there for the for first, um, just about half a second back for second, and then a second back from that time for third. So they're really getting down there already. And Andy Smetigard in the uh, AMS entry has now jumped up into third. Ian O'Gorman, our teammates, had a 136.333. Yeah, and a 136.4, so just a tenth <laughs> of a second between them. They actually went autocrossing last weekend uh, for fun, um, as much fun as, as those two guys can have without getting competitive. <laughs> they drove the same car, and all weekend were pushing each other back and forth. The last run of the weekend, they finished within one thousandth of a second of each other in the autocross with Tom just coming out on top. That's just incredible <laughs> close, isn't it? Uh, it's just so much fun to see that sort of a... Uh, of stuff and it tells you about just what kind of good friends th they are even you know i mean sometimes the most competitive people are teammates as opposed to other competitors on the track and then to just go out there and have some fun like that is really cool so look there at that red entry of scott robertson the number 213 currently 17th in the overall order yep scott is Ooh, a bit of lock up there yeah he's the the ultimate uh gentleman on on track he actually drives that car to all of the races um, and in addition to that, he complete, uh, competed in and completed one lap of America in that car this year, which was uh, quite an incredible feat for a, a little tiny race car. It's got some serious miles on it is what you're saying. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. It has uh, probably the most mileage of any car in this field this year. Coutil is ducked into the pits. Team taking a look and uh, look at the... One th of the things you can do quickly during a session is adjust tire pressures. And it, it, you know, people that aren't real familiar with racing, it always amazes them how very small increments, quarter pound, half pound, can really change the handling of the car. Can yep. It? Yeah, that's right. So they're, they're taking temperature uh, pressures of, uh, taking the tire pressures while those tires are hot right after he came off track. Um, they'll also be taking the temperatures of the tires across the tire surface, the inside edge, the middle of the tire, and the outside edge to see how the alignment's working, make sure they're getting the the best use out of that tire. 
Another look there to Gorman. As he is hustling that number 94 around the track. Again, the uh, ASM entry, that's a S2000, a 2004, as the uh, checkered flag comes out. 15 minute practice session winding up here. Again, really doesn't have any bearing on where you start the race. It doesn't really affect where you go out to qualify. It's truly just a free practice to get out there. But you see somebody that gets right up to the front early uh, and hangs on for most of the session. Gives you a really good idea. And Eric Coutil was very quick. It stopped early, as you said, uh, to duck into the pits and get those readings on those tires. And that's a very good point you make. It, you know, measuring across the tire, uh, it tells you, all right, do we have this really, you know, are we getting that uh, the best use out of the tires? And generally, uh, everybody runs one weekend on a set of tires. The previous events tires might be used for this practice, but after that, it's, it's just one set, yeah? Yep, yeah, that's what we'd expect to see. So especially in the front runners who, where they're really trying to be competitive um, in the series, they will be running a used set of tires for um, this session to get a feel for the car, make sure everything's working, um, make sure things like those lockups that we saw, they're not destroying a new set of tires with those lockups. Um, and then for the qualifying session, when everything starts to count, they'll put generally brand new sets of tires on run the qualifying sessions and then run that set throughout the rest of the competitive weekend and that's a good point you know if you hurt a tire early in this uh, it's going to be problematic for you and one of the reasons that you try you know the idea is to run one set through the weekend it's just cost containment i mean that's the idea of this the 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 real mo if you will the mission statement of grid life is motorsports inclusion and you can't be very inclusive if it's huge price and you're keeping people that can't spend that kind of money out of it. They really work hard at that, and it's tremendously successful. I mean, we've got, I think, uh, one of the biggest fields, maybe the second biggest field ever here this weekend, so the formula works. Yes. Yeah, it's very, very accessible for people, very easy to get into for motorsports. Mm -hmm. um, motorsports is expensive at, at really every level, but this is about as cheap as you can go racing and competitively racing and as easy as you can get into it. And I like the idea of, you see this in other forms of, of club racing and the like, the tinkerers class, as it's called, mm -hmm. or, the, or the backyard engineering class. Uh, it is, is going away, and here it truly lives and breathes well uh, with all of these, these options here for adding aero, putting in different engines, doing you know mods to the car. But every one of those is tracked so that the officials can say, all right, here's the weight you're going to carry. Here's the tire you're going to run to keep everybody pretty close. And to me, that's the idea. Get everybody in the window and then let them race. And that's what this series does better than anybody. I think. Yep, that's right. And and what we're going to see now is almost every single one of these drivers is going to drive back to their paddock spot, jump out of the car, grab a wrench, and start working on stuff and, and changing things and checking things um, over on the car. And they will work on these cars until our qualifying session. And that, by the way, just to give you an idea, is uh, – Coming up at 3.25 this afternoon is when the GTL, uh, the GLTC qualifying is expected to happen. A lot's going to be happening in between that, of course. These are very busy, busy weekends. There's the uh, the high-performance driver education sessions and the like, and then the time attack, which uh, the track battle, as they call it here, uh, and uh, that's going to be coming back up at about 1.05 is when that will be hitting the track. And then, of course, we've got GT, uh, GLTC quali, and then another time attack session, and then at the end of the day, the first of four races uh, that will be unfolding and uh, that's just today alone and then tomorrow everything starts to get really right. intense as we've got three races with a that uh, that and the shootout returns for this one and i'm really yes. excited about that yeah the shootout really gives an opportunity to shake things up you yeah. know because you only get one shot it's it, th that will help those time attack drivers that have crossed over to gltc um, because they're used to that go out and set that lap with that pressure and then of course as that first, as, as that third race goes off, they do a random pull for a number to invert the uh, the up to the top 25% of the field, I think, yep. for that fourth race. But they don't tell them until that third race is over. So you can't try and run yeah. back in the pack a little bit and game right. it up. So they've thought this through. And it sh it, one thing it does is produces some absolutely fascinating racing. Yep, that race four should be very, very exciting um, with the inverted grid. And you can see we've got some fans filling out in the infield, getting ready to watch action here at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course as we are here once again for the Grit Life Mid-Summer Meet. Looking forward to it. Lots more to come here as the day unfolds.
Today's coverage of the Grid Life Touring Cup is brought to you by FCP Euro. Every part you buy is guaranteed for life. Falcon Tire. Competition proven performance. Momo. The official safety partner of Grid Life. Hawk Brakes. Race proven. Street legal. And Valvoline. Valvoline VR1. Available at advanced auto parts stores.